in 50 minutes. Then we spend 10 minutes just chatting. And uh, so if I start early, it doesn't count towards my 50. But uh, how in the world do we do something like this and um, do it in such a short time with there's so many things? And what in the world's going on? And the Lord wants us to be ready as we study. Three things not to be unaware of. And all these notes, by the way, PDF will be attached to the uh, stream as soon as it posts. But he, he wants us to not be unaware of his Romans 11. Three places where he says that I want you to know. Or the one he says the word ignorant, it means to be unaware. I don't want you to be unaware of my working and dealing with the nation of Israel. And so here we are with Israel in the forefront. I want you to know what I'm doing with Israel. I'm not done with Israel. Much of the world is, we're going to see. Spiritual gifts, Romans, I don't want you to be unaware of the Spirit. And as I say, we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God is not a cessationist. He is moving. His word is alive and the spirit moves. And I need more of the Holy Spirit, as Pastor Joe Foch says, to do the dishes than I do to stand up here and teach a Bible study. I need the Holy Spirit to love my wife. I need the Holy Spirit to father and parent my, and these type of things that we would call so daily. And I think it was Billy Graham's wife, you know, the problem uh, the problem with life is it's so daily, and there's just so much. So we need the Holy Spirit, and Lord, would you give us the Holy Spirit? But at this point of our day, I don't want you to be unaware of, and he speaks of his soon return and his coming as we read First Thessalonians chapter 4. So we study this not to, to be... Uh, not to be scared, but to be prepared. And so a peace that God's in control, a priority, what's really important, knowing and looking at the signs of the times around us. And there's a purity, First John 2, that when he comes may find a spotless bride. And that's a prayer request for all of us, Lord. May we be found perfect and pure. And proof that you can't make this Bible up. And boy, reading today, doing today's study, just amazing how the projection of the persecution that would come, how it unfolded for Smyrna 60, 70 years before it happened. Uh, that's an amazing. Then there's proof. Uh, that's the proof. And may we preach the word to a lost and dying world. So Lord, would you meet us here, speak to us and let a sweetness come. Lord, I pray for all that came. Uh, it can be a sleepy Sunday after a holiday and uh, a turkey coma. But here we are, Lord, and uh, I thank you that you stirred us and you bring us, and Lord, that you would uh, just have a way and take us away, I pray, in your name, amen. So, hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. I enjoyed my whipped cream with a little bit of pumpkin. Uh, that's it. I wait till everybody leaves and I get a piece of pumpkin pie and I get a can of whipped cream and uh, nothing to do with prophecy. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord for Thanksgiving. And so we look at these 14 points, and first and foremost, we always start with Israel, because as soon as the rapture happens, God, um, God all focuses on Israel, and well, how much closer is the rapture when we look at Israel today? If you want to know what time it is on the prophetic clock, look at Israel. So what time is it on the prophetic clock? We see these pieces coming together, but you know, I still want to do all 14. I, I never want to be a sensationalist uh, when it comes. To, this is the biggest thing that's going on, so let's make it the biggest thing. Oh, they want everybody to get a, a COVID shot or, or something like that. Oh, let's, let's make that the, the biggest thing. Or, oh, well, now it's uh, Israel. Let's make that the biggest thing. It's all of these things. And it's almost to me like, man, I... I as, as greatly as what I see going on in Israel for us, and it just stirs us. We read, you know, these are all just things we we find interesting together and stirs us together. But wow, this digital, the digital currency, it's, it's amazing how fast it's come in just one year and how fast it's going. And um, 
So we take all 14, not just Israel. But the first up is Israel because that is the prophetic clock. Three things uh, we always look at. Nation, can a nation be born in a day? Uh, the regathering of the nation of Israel and then the cup of trembling as we read Zechariah. Well, surely the cup of trembling, but they had to be a nation first. And we're the generation that sees a nation before us after 2,000 years without a homeland. And uh, what we're studying today, Jerusalem had already been sacked and destroyed in like, 70 AD and now here they are somehow they're still existing as a nationality and they're in the land May 14th 1948 and this is the craziest thing wouldn't it be a, the last place I'd want to be is Israel I would be like if there's opportunity to get out look at this and again I try to do my best that uh, I only reuse a slide from last month if I think it's that pertinent I always go, here's what's happened in the last 30 days. So this always stays fresh for us. And then it shows us this progression. But this is from this month. And it says, significant increase in Jews desiring to immigrate to Israel since the October 7th Hamas attack. You would think, no way, I don't want anything. I don't want to live there. This is insanity. And yet they're seeing an uptick of people going, I need to return to my homeland. It can only be supernatural. And it's just what God said would happen in Ezekiel 36 is he'll gather them from the four corners. Well, they are on a great increase, seven plus million Jewish people living there, about three million since 1948. And uh, that's an amazing and another three plus four million in immigration. Cup of trembling. These are last month's slide, but it's still raw, isn't it? The terrorist attacks and what we've seen, the catastrophe and the barbaric attack. And what I'm saying here is purposeful because we'll be talking about it. We, some of us were talking about it before we started this the rise of anti Semitism. Is like through the, more than any time in my life personally, in all of my life. And they have this attack and the rise in anti-Semitism increases. We're all adults, so I'm just going to teach it and speak it like adults and just speak it and recognize it. This wasn't just a killing. This was something that's beyond even barbaric, demonic. These, the women, and it's amazing how silent the world is because of the woman's rights and that promotion, and yet the silence that the world's not outraged what happened to women. What happened to women Plenty of eyewitnesses. Now, I waited. I didn't want to say anything in any of, this, any of these things until I got confirmation from sources that I could truly believe. But stories of rape, multiple rape of women, singularly, openly, and one woman, after being multiply raped by multiple terrorists, they cut off her breast and played with it. And then while one man was still raping her, shot her in the head. And then fin this is certified journalist who respect. This is what happened. This was more than a murder. This was truly an inspired demonic. And we're the ones who saw it. I never thought I would see anything like it, ever. Even our president, so let's, our president of the United States made it very clear that this was a terrorist attack. The United States stands in that agreement. There's a picture uh, of a bomb shelter, and there was 19 people in there, and there's the video. I watched it to confirm it, so I could, I don't, it's hor horrible to watch these things. And what you see there is I stopped and clipped the video at the time where he throws a grenade in where 19 people are hiding uh, from what they thought was aerial attacks, not knowing that the ground invasion was coming as well. And he throws a grenade in there. The Palestinian Authority, West Bank, 
they give a pay to slay. This is what is happening. It's a pay to slay, and it was in, in the paper yesterday. Some of these terrorists who are being released from prison in this hostage exchange, when they get back into Gaza, their families are going to really receive hundreds of thousands of dollars because they stabbed and they killed when, um, when they were in Israel. And here we see the Palestinian Authority, um, Abbas, He's paying uh, some of the terrorists from the West Bank, sent it in to Gaza for doing this horrendous thing. And it's all going to play in. We tie all these things in because the United States and the world says when the war is ended, Gaza should be under the governance of Palestine, the Palestinian uh, organization under the man who I just said, Abbas, who pays to slay. The Palestinian Authority should oversee Gaza because Israel shouldn't occupy. And so we see these things, and it's almost a delusion. And of course, it's a strong delusion, uh, the blinding. Now, here's what is continually, and I, you know I say it, Psalm 122, verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and that's my heart. May we pray and we will for the peace of Jerusalem. When there's peace in Jerusalem, there will be peace in Gaza, West Bank, and everywhere else. But there will never be true peace until the Prince of Peace comes. I pray for a peace right now. It's horrendous. What's happening to civilians in Gaza, it's heartbreaking. It's heart-wrenching. What happened in uh, Israel, heartbreaking, heart-wrenching. What we see, these type of things, and people go, why does Israel still keep bombing? And that's all the media keeps pointing. Israel's still bombing. Hey, they're taking out a hospital. I said it two months ago or October 10th, you know, the Sunday, the next day after, a week after it happened, I says, they're bombing buildings because there's tunnels underneath. That's what we've always known. That's not something new, but the world wants to make it something new. They have to bomb the building so they can bomb the tunnels underneath. Then we'll see a slide somewhere here. Israel built some of those bunkers when they did what was known as Occupy Gaza. Well, the point that I'm making is why is Israel, they're still, since this war began, and continually last night, this, I got an app that will... Um, ping every time there's I have to turn it off because my phone would just keep pinging but it's an app that says here's where the missiles here's where the rockets are coming in at 10,500 rockets have been launched from Gaza towards Israel in the last 47 50 days um, but what we see extreme anti-semitism of that Israel is the aggressor. I don't know if anyone saw this, but there was an interview. This isn't Fox News. They're just reporting on it. So this prisoner swap is 50 Israelis and, uh, and alike. And I'm going to step aside and, and I'm going to step aside because I know I don't have a slide, but even today what the release is, no Americans have been released. There is no fear of the United States of America in Gaza by Hamas. There are at least a dozen or more Americans who are in Gaza being held hostage and they have not released Americans. They have no fear that there's gonna be a reprisal in any way from the United States of America through President Biden administration. But right now it's rough numbers, 50 that would be released Israeli, but some of them are Thai and uh, Nepali and um, American, but Israeli, and 150 Palestinian Arab people. And so the interview was, look at the disgrace of Israel, how they devalue the life of the people of Gaza. They think one Israeli life is worth three Hamas life. It's delusion. It's just a twisted delusion. A good, twisted's a good word. Just a delusion. You can see the Israeli spokesman like, that is, that is just like insane. That is sick that you would say such a thing. They're releasing people who murdered. They're letting them back out to go back in. There's no reform there. And yet this is the state that we're in. So real quick as I do this on a, can you find Israel? 
you got to really look. You got to know your geography. Uh, there it is. That little sliver of land the size of New Jersey. There it is, yet it's the cup of trembling. And here's what the reason is. I spoke it last time we were together, so I just put it out there. All these notes are online. The Quran is very clear about um, the, the jihad, very clear about what they think of the Jew, what they think of the Christian. They have a saying, first Saturday, those who worship on Saturday, then Sunday, those who worship on Sunday. The Quran makes these statements. O believer, take not the Jew or Christian as friends. They are but one another's friends. If any one of you take him for a friend, he sh is surely one of them. God will guide God will not guide the evil do. If you make friends with a Jew or a Christian, there will be a punishment from Allah against you. That is chapter five of the Quran. Uh, that all this I gave a good fifteen minutes last time we were together, so I don't want to do that again uh, for this study for time's sake and to progress. But I, again, I make the point of Jerusalem's not mentioned in the Quran, but it is mentioned 800 times in the Bible. There is no such thing as the word Palestine in the Bible. Um, so, uh, nor is the word uh, Palestine in the Quran. What I'm showing here is this was the promised land that God gave Genesis 15, gives the dimension of how big uh, the land of Israel is, and yet you can see how little they have taken. And uh, just put that out there. This is what God promised them. They've only taken a small portion of it. Here's the word for all of us. There's so many promises of God that we haven't claimed. All the promises of God are yes and amen, yet so many times we won't claim and take all the promises. And Israel is the perfect example. But God gave them the land. He gave them Jerusalem. And the point that I make is that inlay of that red is Arab countries and you can see what it is compared to the United States and yet the Arab countries won't take their fellow Arabs into their land. This could all be over if Arabs would go back into Egypt, Jordan, Saudi, um, Iraq, Iran, these type of, there's a reason and it's a spiritual reason because they don't want and I got clips here that um, I got clips here somewhere. There we go. That, um, no. Well, somewhere. We'll get there. I go, oh, there it is. But Egypt says, no, it, this, this has to stop. But no, they can't come into Egypt. Jordan, this has to stop. This war has to stop. But they can't come in to Jordan, which is right next door there. And there's a reason of it. And be, because of it is they don't want the pressure to stop. Because when you bring a peace, then there's a peace that ends and there would be a peace in the land. And here we see that they don't want that. Why is the United States pushing, I already spoke this, the Palestinian to lead Gaza and there's the pay to slay. And here's my warning for the United States and here's a place for prayer as we pray for peace of Jerusalem. Pray for all the lives that are there. But you know, there's just this place for Americans Joel 3 says, God will bring a judgment upon those who divide God's land. And for the United States, President Biden, or any of the other world leaders, Biden, Blinken, Secretary of State, when this war is over, there has to be a two-state solution. And woe to America if we send a warship and then at the end of it, say, we want something out of it. And what we want is that you're going to go full on go for a two-state solution. Because we just saw the picture. God gave the land to Israel. It's nothing to do with us. I don't say we, don't, we shouldn't send military supply and these type of things. But for us then to get involved and then say, and then you have to divide the land. There is a dangerous place for the United States because Joel makes it very clear. I will bring a judgment upon those who divide the land. And so this is what the push is. Um, to give it to the Palestinian Abbas is insane. He's a pay to slay. And uh, we look at this. The whole world, we look at this. Um, 
Obama links, this is President Obama links Hamas attack with unbearable Israeli occupation. Yeah, what we saw there, the raping and all that, but, you know, it's because Israel was so suffocating and the unbearable oppression. Occupation, that's a mis... This is the president does know is that they're not occupying Gaza. Uh, Netanyahu blasts uh, Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau for saying the Israeli kills Palestinian babies. Here's something interesting. We're going to talk about a one-world government here shortly, and but I put this in now. The United States chief, you know, he misquotes more than anybody on the facts of what's happening uh, there in there. But, you know, the United Nations has passed a total of 761 resolutions against nations. Israel is 267 of them. They have yet to condemn Russia for their invasion into the Ukraine. The United Nations has yet to call Hamas a terrorist attack. But we see Israel gets more condemnation than anyone. It's spiritual what we're looking at here. What we're seeing, folks, and it's just a reminder. I know you know these things. What we're seeing here is it's spiritual. And so when we step into the spiritual realm, well, what is it? Well, here's what it is. The devil wants to wipe out Jerusalem and Israel so he can wipe out what happened there 2,000 years ago. That's what it's all about. If I can wipe out what happened 2,000 years ago, then I can wipe out that there was a Savior that came to die for the, the world. And so there's Israel, the cup of trembling. But you want to hear something amazing? Because God is love. Because I, by any means, am the last person to say, you know, terrorists, Romans 13, uh, the governing authorities need to judge the lawbreaker. But Gazans, they just, they're just like us. Typical person. I just want to go to work. Ukraine, the same. Russians as well. I just want to go to work. I want to come home. I want to love my family. I want to enjoy my, my kids. And I just want to live in peace. I don't want all this. And yet, there they are put into this mess. And yet, here's an article that this has happened before. It's happened in Iran. It's happened all over the Middle East. But there is, and this is... Um, CBN, Christian Broadcast Network, uh, they're saying there's report after report, supernatural move of God in Gaza as hundreds reportedly meet Jesus in dreams. God shows, oh, I can't get in there and preach the word, I'll send a dream. And so sometimes I say, Lord, would you send so-and-so a dream? And I think that's a fine prayer. But you know, many times the Lord just says, I got something better in a dream. I got you. Ray, I need you to go talk to them. I want you to go put on my heart, put on my feet, put on my hands and go tell them why I died and stand before them as the living example. But in some cases, in many ways, he sends dreams and that's amazing. Well, the European Union is going to be revived into what we know as the Roman Empire. A man's going to arise, the Antichrist. We'll study through uh, him um, as we, we go through our study in the book of Revelation, he's going to show up and the world's going to be in chaos and he's going to do what no one can. He's going to make a seven-year peace pact. That's amazing. And um, he'll be the one to do it. Revelation 13, Daniel 7, Daniel 9, all these notes are tagged to this video and audio. Well, here we see it. The revived Roman Empire is a European super state. There you see it. Before our very eyes, rebirth, and the amazing thing, it's largely part of NATO that we see. And so we see the alliance of them coming together in war. War unites. War divides, but war unites. And here we see this uniting and rebirthing of the Roman Empire coming into a common cause uh, through war. We could talk more and more on that, but here the earthquake, famine, and pestilence, just as Jesus would say there in Matthew 24, in the last days they'll rise like birth pains. Well, here we're on day 630, 640 of the war in the Ukraine. Um, no one, no one even thinks about it hardly anymore. Here we see the catastrophe before our very eyes in Israel, October 7th, and now 50 plus days later of the continual bombing and killing. Do you know? Maybe you don't. You know the 
biggest leaders of Hamas, they don't live in Gaza. Isn't that something? They live in Qatar, which is fascinating in that Qatar is the one who's in the middle of the so-called hostage brokering. This article, New York Post, Hamas leaders worth staggering $11 billion living in luxury. They don't live in Gaza, in the poverty and the war. They live in Qatar. We flew in there when we were doing missions. It is as opulent and, you know, it's, it's wealth beyond your imagination as you look at it. And here they are on their private jet wearing their suits and with their haircuts and their beard. And yet these guys, well, Israel did send a message. This is kind of a digress. We know where you're at. So Israel sent in a message that they will, if need be, they will do, they will take the war outside of Gaza. But in an interview, New York Post re- records this, Hamas leaders admit and hope for permanent Israeli war. They don't want to run Gaza. Here's what they say. Our goal was achieved. We were brought back up to a recognition. We didn't want the silent. We want a continual, constant pressure on Israel. We want the world to look at Israel for the evil that they are. This is how they perceive it. We want a war that never ends so that we, Hamas, and Israel, the evil, will always be on the front page. And here we are, Russia, Ukraine, that hardly, that is page two. It's concerning to me because Zelensky's not going to allow himself to stay on page two for the duration. He needs this great funding coming from the West. But they got what they want. We want this to constantly stir. And so here are these. Um, Hamas releases 13 Israeli, 12 Thai hostages as ceasefire holds. But this is how it played out yesterday. They refused to hand over hostages. They blame it's, it's Israel's fault. But then they did later, later, much later in the day, release hostages. But I still come to, but not one American yet. They have no fear of America. And that's troubling that that's where we stand. Well, here's Israel. Talk about wars. They, they got this one going on. But all this money is ultimately funded at the end of the day through Iran. It's a proxy war. And Iran now, according to the nuclear, uh, UN nuclear watchdog, Iran has enough enriched uranium to make three nuclear bombs. So what do you do? You keep fighting in, in Gaza when you know the big thing is Iran. Israel's literally on a brink. They've got to make a decision. Do we expand the war to the next place? And, of course, America's there with a carrier. Our world could change. We could see a nuclear exchange uh, in our lifetime, and who would have thought it? I say the greatest war going on is in the womb, and this again, as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, as we pray for the war that's going on for the innocents, but we also pray for the the voice that's voiceless in the womb. Ohio voters this month enshrined abortion access into their constitution. Doesn't matter what Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade was federal, and the whole point of Roe versus Wade was to push it down to the state level and say the state's up for you to dis- decide. So Ohio took it to the voter. And do you remember this used to be the big battleground, red and blue, and that's why. Mill, hundreds of millions of dollars in the last two elections were funneled into Ohio. To win Ohio was to win. Same with Pennsylvania. Well, now here we go that Ohio has swung all the way to this side of the blue, that they are 100% on to abortion access on demand. And the war's not over. Um, Wall Street Journal poll support. This is all this month stuff. Wall Street Journal poll support for abortion access near an all-time high. It's now beyond the 50%. I think it's a 56-44 or something like that. But now the stirring, and this is where we get to pray about it, Mike Johnson, America, revisits landmark scoutist decision and use uh, of government. This is what he's being challenged as evil because he thinks, hey, we should just wipe abortion out totally, not just at a federal but at a state level. So as we talk about points of prayer, this man, Mike Johnson, needs prayer. 
This is a man who's standing in literally the greatest line of fire of any other political figure in the United States of America. So we'll shall, before we close, we'll pray. In fact, you know what? Father, I pray, we pray as a family. We've come this far to pray, Lord, would you bring peace in Israel? Bring the peace of Jerusalem. Then there will be peace in the Middle East, but never until the Prince of Peace comes. But let there be that peace and protection. And Lord, I pray for the voiceless in the womb. We pray supernaturally. Lord, just one is our prayer. Rescue that one today that she would change her mind, that the, the man would, would uh, stop his push. And Lord, that something supernatural would happen. And it would be our church that gets involved in it. Lord, here we are. Provide and you do what only you can do. But we pray for Mike Johnson as a church, Lord, that you would protect him and his family, his kids, his wife, how the devil wants to get in, stir up their dinner time, no doubt, and turn them against one another. All of his simple, continual tactics attack the marriage so that uh, we can't be about the ministry. But Lord, that you would protect that and that you would protect him and provide and use him in this day. Lord, we as Americans, we want to see America finish strong for your glory. In your name, amen. Well, there's going to be a one world government along the way and a one world religion. Uh, notice the key there. It's not going to be religionless. It's just going to be Christless. And there's going to be a false prophet who's going to come in this one world religion and say, the Antichrist, that's God. And so that will play into this rebuilt temple along the way. But there's our scriptures for the one world government, Revelation 13, Revelation 17. And here we see the one world government. As I said, the, it won't be in the one world religion, won't be religionless. It'll just be Christless. But boy, this one world religion will hate the Jews. And that's what makes it so powerful that this Antichrist will swing that. He'll be able to bring a brokering that he'll make the whole, that he'll be able to convince the whole world to stand down on this anti Semitism. And so that they can bring this one world peace together. Fascinating to me, that's how dynamic and charismatic the Antichrist would be. Um, there's those UN resolutions that we've spoken of already. And um, you want to talk about something shameful. The um, Iran this month is, uh, they pick this years in advance, but Iran is chairing the UN social reform this month on what is socially acceptable and all these type of things. And Iran, the, the murderous the state that they are, they're heading that particular oversight in the UN. What an insult to Israel in those things. And there's the UN chief with the Iranian Ayatollah. And um, there's Mike Johnson. If you want to, I talked about it in our Sunday service. I won't redo this. Um, hey, save me two minutes. That worked. Of course, it carried over second service two minutes but if you want to read that article about him and again what's so fascinating about him is that um, he is part of Ray Comfort Living Water uh, which definitely puts the dot in the explanation point that he he's a man after God's heart so there will be iniquity and sin abound and the way that's going to work more so than ever uh, we watch it all around us with and this is no hate speech. I would only say it because God loves you. Anyone listening, homosexual, transgender, if you're confused about those things, God can straighten those things out. He loves you. He has a way that's the best way. But then there's the holy way. And God will not look upon sin, whether it's homosexuality or heterosexual fornication and all these type of things. Uh, it's not just pointed in that one direction but fruit loops uh on their cereal box gives kids free diversity equity and inclusion digital library with cereal purchases and that's the website there the the all red that is look at my that is fruit loops there uh the website in canada is where this is happening if you go there type in the code on your cereal box they'll tell you how to be inclusive
and all loving. So they start with the kid. Here's Target. Um, they're going to have the, you know, the nutcracker. He's in the um, gay flag. And there's Santa Claus. You can buy that on um, at Target this year with his uh, LGBT flag. I didn't watch the Macy Day Parade, especially just knowing anyways, but um, there was word that there was going to be uh, multiple transgender floats. All of it is a purposeful, slow, dropping, diminishing of these type of things to make it acceptable. And all you got to do is erase one of the generations. And this is the generation they're trying to erase. Well, we got a drug problem. 13 times, Oregon opioid death increased 13 times, 13 fold after drug decriminalization. So, hey, it's no longer a crime with a certain possession of drugs. Well, now they're finding uh, overdose deaths are up 13% in the so called liberal move of that. Um, I don't know about you guys, uh, some of you may be working for the government and the various places. The law that's moving now is the all applicants and employees should be addressed by their name and pronouns they use to describe themselves. And so what we talked about in Smyrna this morning, it's going to be this place that if you won't call him um, she, you can find yourself losing your job. Because the pronoun they want, you call me this. And so, and I know this seems an insignificance, but we talked about this time and time again, the sex trafficking. America is the number one offender of sex trafficking. And what's happening at the border is, because of the Biden administration, they no longer do a DNA test because they find it invasion of privacy. And they also want to speed up the entry. So here's what happens. A mother comes or a father comes and he has children. They don't do the DNA test and they find out these, these people are not the same bloodline. This child cannot be this woman's. So what they're doing is they're paying these women or the men, but they're paying mostly these women. You bring these children in, you bring them in, and when you get in there, we'll take the children. We're going to put these are six year olds, eight year olds, the sickness uh, of our country that we're living in. We're going to take them and we're going to traffic them, and then we'll give you so much money to start your new life in America. One third of the children trafficked, uh, it's been determined, are totally unrelated. Something more that we can pray for America, but something more we just see the the depravity. Well, apostasy and the great deception. And what that is, is the false teachers, the departing from the faith and the true biblical Christianity. And um, we're watching it over and over again. Um, The Church of England is approving same-sex marriage. They're down. The Vatican uh, won't take their stand um, on the decision of LGBT. And so we, we see 1.3 billion, those who follow the Catholic faith, that it's starting to see it's a um, surrender to this movement. We can go on and on that. But uh, this month, the White House had a um, day of remembrance for transgender Americans who were killed for being transgender. And I am totally in agreement of all murder is wrong and all murder is hatred. The president says, today on Transgender Day of Remembrance, we grieve the transgender Americans who live, who lives were taken this year. There is no place for hate or discrimination in America. No one should lose their life simply for being themselves. And, and we agree with that. Except here's what there isn't a day of. Here's what isn't a prom- the Christians who are murdered and killed worldwide and what we do about it and, and so many of these things. But you can see it's literally how the agenda gets its promotion, but the things that they don't, it's not going to be religionless. It's going to be Christless. And there's the murder of Christians. You know, the, you know there's 17,000 there's 17, murders in the United States of America every year. 
17,000, that's an FBI st statistic. 16 to 17, year after year after year. We live in a murderous country, but still yet we marginalize which ones are the more. I, I'm amazed that murder gets categorized into, but this one's a hate crime. How can not every murder be a hate crime? It's murder. And so here we see how they use it. Um, but there's two things that, and we say this all the time, there's going to be a new religion, one of the great religions, and one of the, we're watching it, climate change. We've been saying this for two years now. Climate change is becoming the new religion. Worship the earth. But this one is on the move, uh, CNN. There's another Christian movement. Notice that key word, Christian, that's changing our politics. It has nothing to do with whiteness or nationalism. Read the whole article. What it has to do with is it is the um, it's the gospel of um, social works, meaning this is the gospel because Jesus says love your neighbor. Jesus says you know if I was hungry feed me, clothe me, and these things. And what this is is it's the gospel that the Christians should be on good works to make everyone's life better, to live better through work and housing and this and hey I, I agree with that but it's not the gospel we know it and but it's a replacement of hey I do good works and therefore God accepts me for my works and um always been on the rise more so now than ever well knowledge is going to increase it has to and i believe daniel 12 speaking until the time of the end uh knowledge shall increase i think it's it's more specifically in its context of knowledge of the last days and prophetic true but it's also definitely got to be a knowledge that we see in revelation and we'll study about all of this world technology every eye will see him and all these things uh here's some knowledge that's increasing this makes me feel good. Yeah, Pentagon announces a new nuclear bomb 20 times more powerful than the one dropped on Japan. That was pretty rotten, horrible, and that. So here we are building greater nuclear weapons because, well, we got to face Iran and China and Russia and the like. White House tackles artificial intelligence with a new executive order. Everybody knows the fear of, you know, artificial intelligence needs a man and a human in the loop. And I'm not an expert on it by any means, but... It's only what goes, comes out is only determined by what a man has programmed it to do. So you're going to see the evil heart of a man can make it do all these things, which makes me wonder when we see what we see with all this artificial, when do we, are we going to be able to keep doing a prophecy update that I go, I think, you know what I'm saying? Is like, this could be fake news. We don't know at this point. But um, new supercomputer expected to perform two quintil quint quintillions, two billion billion operations per second. Well, you need that type of power to do this type of artificial intelligence. And NASA received a laser beam message from 10 million miles away. It was our satellite that we launched. It's 10 million miles away. And it was programmed to send a signal back. And we received it from 10 million miles away. What's my point about that? Someone's going to have to explain away the rapture. And one of the theories is that they'll explain the rapture away by aliens. So this signal that comes from 10 million miles away, who's the know now? Is it NASA or is it an alien, right? Well, it's NASA. That's, it's not going to be an alien, but they've got to explain it away. It's going to be a Magog invasion, and that's Ezekiel 38. And um, fascinating to me because as we watch it, uh, we, Ezekiel 38, um, Russia, Iran, Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Turkey will invade Israel during a time of peace. Well, that's going to be, I believe, when the man of peace brokers that peace. Something that could happen today. I don't uh, limit that it can't, but I think it's when uh, a man of peace can broker peace because we ain't going to see no peace. But here we are. Uh, I took that picture uh, when I was in Israel be uh, three years ago. And uh, that's a Russian compound 10 miles from the border of Israel. But here's uh, Russia backs Hamas terrorists, calls Israel occupying power that does not have the right to self-defense. Um, Iran is struggling thousands of weapons into the West Bank. So there's Russia, there's Iran. Putin moves to secure Libya, right? 
Libya is on this list. So Putin now is moving to secure Libya uh, and put a military base there. Russia turning against Israel, growing dangerously close to Iran, says Israeli um, minister. Iran president will travel to Saudi Arabia for Islamic summit on Gaza. What's the point about that is? It says... Speaking of the Saudis, when this invasion happens, Saudi Arabia is just going to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing this, but they're not going to do anything more. Well, if you got this agreement and you're tightly knit with Iran, of course you're going to say that you're not going to engage. And where's America? We don't know. But here's the other great piece, Erdogan, Israel will soon be destroyed. Erdogan, uh, the president of Turkey, calls Israel a terror state and criticizes the West. We see all the players together, and there's a Russian nuclear sub that can be three miles off the shore of Atlantic right now, and uh, we wouldn't know it's there. The temple's going to be rebuilt, Matthew 24, Daniel 9, and this Antichrist is going to walk in, proclaim himself God. People are going to be, for the most part, you got to be God. You could only do what God, you brought peace, you stabilized all the world in the mess, but then he's going to um, turn on the Jews, and we're going to see. Um, but you know, there's a picture uh, that was taken. This is in Gaza. These are four of the super bulldozers that are used in the war by Israel. And there they turned those four into a square and turned it into a synagogue. And um, it, it just speaks to me a desire. We need, we need our supernatural God. But I have to still say, sadly though, it's no longer a Jewish, it's no longer Judaism. The Passover lamb came, his name is Jesus Christ. And my heart breaks for the Jewish people who still don't recognize it. And you go through all this hell, you're living in hell, and yet if you don't receive the sacrifice and the provision, there's an eternal hell. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When we read Revelation, when it's all over and, and going back into Zechariah, two-thirds of the Jewish people will die before they recognize that they missed the Messiah. And that happens at this mid-trib point, and I think it uh, ties in where this rebuilt temple, the Antichrist goes in and says, I'm God, and that's when Israel will finally get it. This isn't God. But up to that point, two-thirds of them will have died. Well, where's America? No slide. No mention of America. But we could be finding ourselves in a war. United States military deploys nuclear-powered submarine into the Middle East. I said this uh, last time we were together. Or during U.S. deploys. This was already scheduled, but just by chance. U.S. deploys hypersonic B-1 bomb bomber to Turkey amid the Israeli-Hamas war. Uh, that bomb that can carry up to 25 nuclear bombs. So we got nuclear presence in the Middle East. We got problems with uh, you, you can only give away so much money. Any parent knows that. And uh, before you have yourself a problem, well, Joe Biden under fire is number of migrants double. We got 2 million migrants just this year. And I am not against immigration at all. I believe immigration, uh, their strength, if you want to just get into the economics of it, the strength of it, but it's got to be legal immigration. And what's happening is there's no tracking. And so they're coming in, they're just releasing them. We already talked about the, um, the, the sex trafficking, but this isn't me. I'm not a conspiracy. Homeland Security expert warns Iran-backed terrorists are lurking on American. The FBI said it down there. Uh, they, the FBI agent says, we'd be crazy to think that there aren't terrorists who are coming in on this border. And what you see here is the special interest aliens. And you can see the, the number of them and where they're coming in. Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, and these type of things. Yemen launching missiles over at our ships, Syria, and all these type of things. And so there's a warning that there could be terrorists on American soil. Uh, they were here 20 years ago. So for us not to think they couldn't make it back in. Well, America is diminishing militarily. And here the army is. We're, we're extending into all these army, uh, all these wars. But we don't have enough soldiers now because we told them they have to leave because they didn't get COVID shots. So now the United States government saying, come on back. 
would you come back if you got kicked out and you had to go through all those things? Come on back. Um, you don't have to get a COVID shot, but come on back and we'll re-enlist you. Well, the damage has already been done. The United States is weakened in many ways because of our, uh, the way we handled COVID there. Uh, so there's Mike, Speaker of the House Johnson, wields and carries a lot of power. And I just, I spoke about that, that um, his, his alignment and he shows all the fruit of a true born again believer. So just maybe, and maybe we can do something about it. Maybe there's going to be a revival. And America's going to come into a great revival. And we're part of it. So that's America. Mark of the Beast, we know um, no buying or selling. Interesting conversations about that. Uh, I talked about the speed of the digital currency that's coming. It'll do away with the greenback. And your money will be on your phone. Or the money is going to be on a little chip in your hand. And then guess what? Everywhere you go, we know what you spent. We know where you are. But if you don't buy and sell, and I always make that point, how many of today's I don't even know what Gen Z, X, whatever, double A we're up to. And um, if they were told, if you don't get this mark, you need a mark to connect to your phone. If you don't get this chip, then your phone won't work. How many who are glued into this social media would deny and say, no way? And so we can see how that could be used I say this all the time. I think the Antichrist, one of the things he's going to do, he's going he's to promise, I can make you something that God won't. We talked about it this morning. You know, God, I know you could heal me right now, but you won't. And for us, we go, but I'll still praise you in the storm. But I see the Antichrist as we watch all this technology, CRISPR technology, mRNA, DNA, all these type of things that the technology could come through that he could say, if you worship me, I'll make you, what do you want to be? You want to be taller? You want, you don't like your looks? You want more of this, less of that? And how many people go, I will trade the eternal for the temporal? So we see that as a move. And Babylon, the world headquarter, um, it will, every time it's spoken, 300 times, it's the literal physical city of Babylon there in Iraq. We watch the walls go down, and we watch it re be, being rebuilt. I don't cast it off and go, it seems so insignificant. It's something big, and we just keep watching it, and someday it will become the world headquarters. But if it's all digital, you don't need a big Wall Street anymore because it's digital. There's going to be a battle of Armageddon, the kings of the east coming against the kings of the west, Revelation 16 and um, Revelation 19, 200 million man army. China says they can do it. And we're watching China on the rise. And I close with this last statement. North Korea, number one persecuting uh, nation for our brothers and sisters there. Uh, they launched a satellite uh, this month that puts them in that they say they can now see targets and therefore you can direct your hypersonic missiles. President Biden met with uh, the president of China, Xi Jinping. And Xi Jinping tells President Biden, Taiwan is the most potentially dangerous issue between U.S. and China. So again, U.S. could find itself in a war with Iran, Iraq, somewhere in the Middle East, Russia, now China. Here's President Biden's response this month. Joe Biden as world teeters on World War III. Climate change is the ultimate threat to humanity. <laughs> Hence why we see. But in the end, the good news, it's not out of control. Everything we look at, we see that this book speaks it and we can just have a peace we see that no one could write this book outside of inside this time domain and it gives us a peace that our God is on the throne and our God is speaking to us and no matter what happens to us we know that we're in his hands and so father I do bless you for that and with the few minutes we got left um, we go into questions